ramp. If we go into the gradient ramp, you can see that uh, it starts off on bright white. Um, then after a while, it goes over to uh, a gradient that goes into yellow and down through orange and dark in, down into red, darker red, and then down all the way into black. Now, if you were to apply this to um, your particles in particle flow without any uh, further action, uh, you would basically just end up with this this um, this gradient being applied to your particles as is. You'd end up with a, a gradient going from white uh, to black on on the particle, depending on the mapping was based. Um, you know, you'd either be top to bottom, left to right, or whatever. Now, what I want to do is I want to use the mapped uh, feature of the uh, gradient ramp, and what that does is it it actually defines where. Uh, these colors will be used on a, a bitmap um, or a map, whatever, that you actually place in this slot. So where this particular uh, material is white, it'll use the white here. Where this material is black, it'll use black. And depending on the shades of gray, it'll use these uh, values here. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. If you can imagine this is zero, this is 255. It'll just map uh, the values across. It's a very, very useful feature. Um, and what I've then done is I've used a particle age map in this slot. Now what a par particle age map does is it, it actually will synchronize up with the uh, the age of your particles. Um, so if we go here you, we can see we've got it set up animated age map. Uh, it'll actually synchron up, synchronize up with the age of your particles and will allow you to uh, use these color colors here based on the age of your particles. So this the way this particular map works is uh, when the particle is bir birthed you can see at age 0% which is when it's born, uh, it'll use a white color. Uh, as it goes down to 50% of the entire particle's age, it'll go down into a mid-gray. And when it reaches 100% of the particle's age, it'll go down to black. And when it reaches, obviously, anything above 100% of the particle's age, the particle dies, so it then disappears. So for this option to work, you actually have to have an age for your particles. This is important. Um, otherwise, the system hasn't got anything to synchronize up the, this range. So you can see further down in the flow, I've got a delete operator with an age of 99. And uh, this basically will delete all particles that are 99 frames old. So this gives us a nice range. This gives us a nice range of from 0 to 99. And that will map uh, these values onto the particle using uh, that time uh, relationship. Now. Because it's using a value of white, that means at frame zero, uh, uh, this gradient will use a value of white. And then as the particle gets older, it'll fade from white down into yellow and go through these colors and all the way down to black just before it dies. So uh, having said that, let's have a quick look at uh, how that looks when we uh, do a render. I'll just uh, hit render. Say yes. And there you go, it starts rendering. and. Actually, what you can see is um, that that gradient doesn't actually have just simple colors in them. Each one of those gradient slots has got a, a noise material in with this uh, this pattern in. And that's just to show it uh, fading between the different uh, noise patterns uh, using that gradient map. So you can see over time as the particles age, you can see uh, they're fading through the different colors. Um, so again, a very useful feature. And there you go. You can see it's going down into the dark reds. And uh, depending on what materials obviously are used in the gradient, it'll probably fade down into black at uh, the end of this section. Um, so that's a very useful tip for using um, uh, the uh, particle age map. Use it in a gradient uh, ramp and you get a lot more flexibility what you can actually do with it. Obviously, the, uh, if we you know, looked at the, the particle age map, you can see that it only has three, three colors and they're only flat colors. So there's only there's only so much that you can do with that. So it's much much better to actually use it um, either in a mix map, for instance, as, use it as a mask, or to use it um, to uh, map a gradient uh, ramp, and in that way get more control in that respect. Just close down this window, and the uh, final option you can see is uh, multi sub object. Now. The final option, as I said, is to use the uh, multi-sub object material and the possibilities really uh, open up here as you can assign an animated material ID assignment to your particles based on uh, various options. And it's also worth bearing in mind that the materials held within the multi-sub object material can in themselves have animated bitmap sequences or particle age maps being used within them. Uh, so you've got a great deal of flexibility with this option. 
Um, 